Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're going to finish off our service. And first of all, I actually want to do one more thing that we forgot before, which is to actually load our Firebase music source. So we never call this fetch media data function here. And we just want to call this immediately after our service has been created right here. So for that, we will use our curtain scope or a service um, scope dot launch. So we launch a new curtain to do that asynchronously. And we just call Firebase music source dot um, fetch media data. Next, I want to create a class called Q Navigator. So that will just be used to propagate the information about a specific song, the metadata, to our notification so that we can display it there. And that will be a very short class. Let's do that right here, an inner class actually. Private inner class music Q Navigator. And that will inherit from timeline Q Navigator. Now this one here, which will take a parameter here, our media session that we can just pass here, since we're inside of our service. And inside of this class, we need to just implement this single function. So just press Control I and enter, get media description. So that will just be called once our service actually needs a new description from a media item. So for example, when the song changes, then the notification needs to show a new description of a song. So we just return the description we want to show in that case here. So we use return Firebase music source dot songs at the index, oops, index of window index. So that is just the index of the song that is now playing and we call dot a description on that. And that's already everything we need to do here for this music queue navigator, just to make sure that we always display the correct information. Then we can actually use this media session connector and set that. So, so set queue navigator to new music queue navigator. And that is already it for that. Next, we will implement those two missing functions down here. I'll actually make a little space. Um, on get root and onload children. And first of all, for that, we need what is called a media root ID. What that actually is will get clearer when we implement that. But I'll just want to I just want to make that as as a constant here. Private, or actually not in here. Let's make that in our constants file. Um, const val media underscore root underscore id and we just set that to anything just root id for example and in our music service we can then scroll down and implement those two functions here on get root and on load children let's start with the easy function on get root what is that actually used for well as i actually already explained in an earlier video our app or an app with this media browser service compat is structured in a way that we have several kind of browsable media objects or that we can have them. So for example, playlists, recommended sections, albums, and so on and so forth. And if we click on that, we just load a bunch of media items. So a media item can again just be a browsable item like a playlist or just a song that we can play. And for that, we of course need such a root ID. So basically the ID that refers to the very first media items. So in our case, that is just our Firebase music source. So the songs that we get from Firebase, but in a more complicated app, that could be like all your playlists at once. So that would be basically what displays at first. And since we use a bound service here, and that means several clients can connect to that. In our case, just our activity or view model. That means that we could potentially also deny clients to connect to a specific ID. And that can be managed here in on get root. In our case, we don't even want that only our activity connects to that. So we can just return a new browser root with our media root ID that we created import that pressing L plus enter. And we don't pass any extras here. But if you want to have some verification logic here for the clients, then you can do that in on get root. Now the more interesting function for us is onload children. 
So what we can do is, you can see we have these IDs. In our case, we only have that root ID because we only have a single list of songs. But let's say you also have playlists, you have albums, then each of those playlists and albums has its own ID. And then clients can subscribe to those IDs. So they, for example, just play the items in a specific playlist. And that will happen in onload children. So here we can check, you can see the parent ID, that is the ID a client subscribed to. And according to that, we have this result, which is a mutable list of media browser compat media items. So just a mutable list of media items. And as I said, a media item can either be a playable song or it can be a browsable. So a playlist, an album, something like that. And when we subscribe to such a parent ID, we need to send the corresponding result with the songs or the media items in that parent ID. So if we subscribe to a specific playlist, then we pass the playlist's parent ID here. And in this function, we use this result to give back the results, so the list of songs in, inside of that playlist. So we basically send that back. In our example here, we only have that media root ID. So we still use when check here just for extendability. So if you add more IDs, then you already have that when expression. So when parent ID, according to that, we want to check if that is equal to media root ID. And in that case, so that will be the first subscription that we get in our app. In that case, we just want to use that result to return the media items inside of that root ID. So in our case, just the songs inside of our Firebase music source. And now this onload children function is called pretty early in this service. And it's not called as early as our music source is ready. And that's again a case where we need this when ready function because that is very useful in here, we can have a val results sent. So if we already send our result to this result variable here, and we set that equal to Firebase music source that when ready, so you can see that returns when the music source is ready. And if so, we know that we already sent the results. So you can also see here we get a bool in here, which just refers if the music source was successfully initialized or not. So we can give it a name is initialized initialized like this. And then we can check if the music source was initialized successfully, and then we want to use our result here. And we can send a result now, and you can see now we need to send a result in form of a media items. And for that, if you remember, we also have a function in our Firebase music source, this function here as media items. Now we actually use that. So we use our Firebase music source dot as media items. And we get an error here. Oh, yeah, okay. This send result function, you can see it needs a mutable list. And in our Firebase music source, we just return a normal list. So this map function just returns a normal list. So what you need to do is we just need to convert this list to a mutable list. And then the error will be gone here. Okay. And usually when we call this, we also want to prepare our player or actually when we call this the first time only we want to prepare our player. And for that, what is necessary is we need a variable to check if our player has actually been initialized. Because if we don't do this, then that would lead to our player automatically playing the song once we open our app. And we actually just want to prevent that here in this block. So I will scroll up to our variables and create a private var is player initialized. And we set that to false initially because of course, initially it's not initialized. And then scroll down again to unload children. Here we can check if our player is not initialized. So if in is initialized is equal to false. In that case, we want to call our prepare player function with a list of songs. So just Firebase music source dot songs with an item to play, which is just initially our first item. So Firebase music source dot songs at the index of zero. And play now is set to false. So we don't want to automatically play that once our app is opened. And actually, we should make another check here or like here. And if our songs list actually has at least one item. So if Firebase music source dot is not empty. Otherwise, oops, that songs 
that is not empty. Otherwise, our app would crash here if we would have no songs in that list because we access it at the index of zero. And after that, we will just set is initialized to true. So then we know uh, that we initialized our player now. And did I set that to a val? Yes. Okay, we have to change that, of course. Um, oh, I made a little error here. I actually meant this variable here is player initialized. <laughs> that is a variable, a var. So let's choose that instead. That is a little mistake. I don't know what this is. Oh, that is this initialized. Okay, no. Maybe you already noticed that. Just replace it with is player initialized and replace that with that as well. And now it works. And now we also need to worry about the else case here. So if our actual music source is not initialized, so if it is ready but not initialized, so that means an error occurred there, then we want to just use result but send result not that won't send anything. Or actually it will send null, but we won't get any songs out of that. Well, and now we have that result sent variable. That will now be useful because this onload children, as I said, will be called pretty early when this source is not ready. And what we want to do is we want to tell this result that our results are not ready yet, but they will become ready. So outside of this when ready block, we check if result has not been sent here. In that case, we just want to call result.detach. So that will just check for a later part if this is actually sent here. So the result. Okay. And actually one last little thing in this service is to just clean things a little bit up in on destroy and in another function. Um, first of all, in here, not on destroy, we want to use our exo player and call dot release to just release the resources of this of this exo player. In this function, we actually also want to remove the listener from our exo player. I don't think if that is actually public. No, this music play event listener here, that needs to be public. So let's move this out of here. Um, use music player event listener is equal to this. And then we scroll up to our variables here and objects and create a private late in var called music player event listener, which is of type music play event listener. Then we set that down here, we add it to our exo player. And in our on destroy function, we can then use exo player dot remove listener and pass our music player event listener. So just to re prevent any memory leaks here. And when the task of this service has been removed, so in on task removed, when the intent basically has been removed, then we also want to use our exo player and just call that stop on that so that it just stops playing. And I think one more thing would be, yeah, we don't have anything in this function. What did we actually want to do there? Well, we wanted to update the current duration of the song that is playing. And we don't have that as a variable yet. And that will actually be a singleton since we want to access that from the outside just to display that in a text view, how long that song is. And we certainly don't have that in the metadata information for a song. So we could do that, but then you would need to save that as an actual um, field in your Firestore database, how long a song is in milliseconds. And we don't want to do that. We just want to get it from our Excel player. So what we will do is we will scroll up here and create a companion object in which we will just have a single variable current song <laughs> current dong duration current song duration and set it equal to 0l initially and we also want to make that a private set so that means we can only change the value from within the service but we can read it from outside of the service and then inside of this Lambda block here from our music notification manager, we update that current song duration with our exo player dot duration. But that is now really it for this music service class. 
In the next video, we are going to start to worry about the service connection part. So first of all, we will implement some utility classes or some useful classes to handle errors and events. And then we will implement the actual service connection so we can communicate from this music service with our um, view model actually, so that we can also of course exchange the information about the currently playing song and also display that in our app. If you like this video, then please hit the like button, comment below, and also just please tell me what you think about this series so far. I hope you really like it and you learn something new. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then make sure to do that. Click on the subscribe button and don't miss regular Android content every second day. Have a very nice day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.